What's up you guys, my name is Lila Hooligan and I have decided to get a betta fish. I definitely have experience with betta fish before, but when I had them when I was little, I really didn't have a lot of knowledge when it came to having betta fish. I didn't really take the time to learn more about how to properly take care of them and actually allow them to live a happy full life. So for a while now, I've been thinking about actually getting a betta fish again and actually doing a lot more research before I even get it and preparing myself, preparing the tank, and preparing all the necessities like all the food, all the tank decorations and everything um, before I actually get the fish. I just really want to make sure that I actually do it well this time and make sure that my fish has a happy life. So yeah, this is going to be a really exciting and special video for me. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's start researching. Before I got my betta fish, I decided that it'd be really, really important to do a lot of research. Just because I know that even though betta fish are known to be a kind of beginner fish and they're typically easy to care for, there are still several things that they absolutely need to be able to live a happy, full, and healthy life. And there's actually tons of myths when caring for a betta fish, such as the tank size, heating requirements, etc. So if you plan on getting a betta fish yourself, I highly re recommend doing a lot of research beforehand. And another thing that I did too was watch a lot of videos because that helps a lot. So I'll leave down all the helpful links that I found while researching and all the helpful videos that I watched. Alright, so now let's talk about all the accessories I bought for the tank. So the first things first that I have is this gravel cleaner. This is going to help me basically siphon out all of the food and um, fish waste that will be sinking down to the bottom into the gravel. I should also mention that if you're buying any new equipment or tank decor, you should always clean it before you actually use it on your tank because there can be a lot of debris that came in with the packaging when it was being shipped. All right, the next thing that I got is an aquarium heater. This is a 25 watt um, high door aquarium heater. And from my research, I know that bay fish really do need heated tanks. So this will go directly into my tank and I will be able to control the heat and um, make sure that the water for my beta is always gonna be warm. Next thing that I have is an aquarium thermometer. This will help me be able to know what exact temperature the water is in my tank. Next, I have the Seachem Prime concentrated conditioner to be able to dechlorinize my water. And for my gravel, I got a 20 pound bag of Carib Seas Supernatural Premium Aquarium Substrate. I decided to go with gravel just because I like the look of gravel a lot more over sand. And I definitely knew that I didn't want um, colored gravel because I just feel like to me it looks kind of tacky and I just really want a, a lot more of a natural look in my tank. Next thing I have here is my freshwater master test kit. This test kit will help me when I need to test my water um, over the duration of the time that I'm doing my fishless cycle. And last but not least for the necessity, I have this three set of Omega One Beta Buffet flakes, pellets, and blood worms. I decided to get this set instead of like just getting one type of fish food for my beta fish because I did read that it's better to have a variety because I know some beta fish can be really picky on whether they want pellets or flakes. It also prevents them from getting kind of bored from one type of food. And so I just really wanted to add more of a variety to my betta's diet. So the next thing I'm going to move on to is the tank decor. First of all, I wanted to explain that my vision for this tank was actually going to be mostly a planted tank because again, I really want that natural look and there are lots of live plants that can provide a lot more nutrition to the water, help detoxify 
it and it'll just make my better fish a lot more happier but I also really want to decorate it in a specific way with pink decor this cute little bridge I thought it was really cute and the size was actually perfect next I have this floating log I thought it'd be really cool just to have like a floating log on the surface of the water so that's another place for my better fish to hide if he ever wants to or just rest inside of it and then I got another log but this one will actually sit at the bottom of the tank again it's just like another hiding place for my better to feel secure and then I know that they like sleeping on plant leaves so I also got these two plant hammocks and last but not least for the fake decor I have these really really cute line dog statues they're so freaking cute and they're so tiny and perfectly sized I definitely didn't want something too big for my tank also I just want to mention that it is very important to one sand down any of your decor if it has any sharp edges before you put it in your betta's tank and before you put in your actual betta because it will tear its fins as the betta just like swims by it and another thing Thing is you definitely need to do a good rinse of these um, tank decors before you put it in the water because it can have a lot of like debris from the shipping and the packaging. You also might be able to spot if the product was made really poorly and the paint starts coming off when you rinse it. So what I did for these tank decors was that I just ran it under hot, really really hot water and just rinsed each one really thoroughly and then I let it air dry overnight. The next thing that I'm really excited to show you guys are the live plants that I actually got for the tank. Let me show you guys what I have. So the first thing that I got is this Java fern that has been attached very well to this log. I got a large size so that it could be just in the background of my tank. And then next I got this, I think it's pronounced Anacris. I just really like the look of it as well. And then last but not least, I got this floating moss ball. This one was really cool because it floats and it has this little anchor. So that is all I have for the tank accessories and the decor. So now let us move on to actually setting up my tank. Hello, this is Julie from the future and I just wanted to mention that I really do highly recommend the tank that I got. Fluval is a great well-known brand and a 5 gallon tank is the minimum for a better fish and I honestly feel like this tank was absolutely perfect. It included all the lighting I needed and all the filtration that I needed. Um, the setup was extremely easy as you could see in the video and yeah, so I just wanted to mention that if you're looking for a tank, I definitely recommend the one I got.
looking so beautiful. All right, so I think I'm really happy actually with how this turned out. It looks a lot more like natural and um, a lot more spacious for my betta to be able to swim around and explore. So a term that you're going to see a lot when you're setting up your brand new tank is nitrogen cycling. I'm just going to briefly explain what it is. So at the beginning, fish waste and fish food will produce ammonia, which is very toxic to your fish. And over time, that ammonia will turn into nitrite, which is also toxic to your fish. And then more over time, that nitrite will turn into nitrates, which is actually beneficial bacteria that will help your fish and keep the condition of the water healthy. And then the the live plants in your tank will take in that nitrate and produce oxygen which is again also beneficial for your fish so in order to do this cycling in my tank i did what is called fishless cycling and this is where i would add ammonia to the tank which in my case i added in fish flakes so that it could create the ammonia in the water every single day for about a week and then i checked the ammonia levels in my water using the water test kit over the course of the week to see if the ammonia levels would go up and once they do go up that tells me that the cycling has begun Alright, so over time, I was realizing that I wasn't sure if the heater was even actually heating the tank properly, so I decided to get a different heater after watching a bunch of YouTube reviews and I found this one. And what I like about this one in comparison to the, the hydro heater I was using before is that there's an easy way to set the temperature and there's actually a display to show the temperature. So about a week in, there was finally a notice of some nitrite levels going up in my tank. And then I did notice that there is a small growth of algae, which is also perfectly normal to see at the beginning stages of the cycling. Finally, by the end of the second week, there was a rise in the levels for nitrate, which is amazing because that means that my cycling is nearly towards the end. In addition, as the days were going by, there was a big bloom of diatoms, which is this brown looking algae. Again, this is completely normal while you're cycling. And finally, what felt like a long three weeks, there was a large decline of ammonia and nitrite levels where it got to zero within 24 hours, which signals that the cycling is actually done. Another sign is that there's a large algae bloom, green one specifically, and that also just indicates that there's enough nitrites in my tank to even support a bloom of green algae. Since the cycling has complete, I now have to do a large water change. Usually when I'm just caring for the tank normally with my fish in it, I will only have to do a 20% water change every single week so that the beneficial bacteria stays in the filter. But right now I have to do a large one just to get rid of a lot of the algae that built up while also keeping the beneficial bacteria in the filter media. After a lot of research, I finally decided to get a cleanup crew of ghost shrimp. Now when it comes to ghost shrimp, or any shrimp in general, acclimating is a very, very particular process. You have to first acclimate the water in their original bag to the water in your tank by floating them for about 15 to 30 minutes. And then after that, you would pour them carefully into a bucket and do what is called a acclimation drip method. Essentially, you are dripping water from your tank, about two drips per second, and over time, you wait until the water in the bucket doubles. So you are helping them not get shocked by the pH levels in your water tank, and then they'll slowly be able to acclimate it before you put them into the tank. And here, I'm adding some duckweed, which is a floating plant that you can add to a betta tank, and it will add a great amount of security and coverage for my betta. And then after the water in the bucket for the shrimp has doubled or tripled, I waited for about an hour or so and then safely netted them and added them to the tank. Shrimp are very known for jumping out of the tank whether the water conditions aren't right or they just don't feel healthy. To be able to counteract this, at first I used this just for the first day and then I was able to order this on Amazon. It's like some kind of canvas mint and craft material. So I taped a few together to make it longer and to be able to cover up that hole in the lid of the bed. Now, there are many shrimps that you can choose to be as your cleanup crew, but I decided on ghost shrimp because one, I really like their transparent look. I just think it's really unique and cool to um, see them just interact with the tank and eat the 
food and see the food just like go down their bodies. Bedos are known to be very territorial and they are typically known to have tank mates. And ghost shrimps are only about 25 cents each, at least where I got them. So if they happen to die, whether due to water conditions, which is really common within the first month, or if my bedo decides to eat them, I won't be really losing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He's alive and well. Oh, the water's so dirty. <gasps> Hello. Little time. Oh, he seems okay. Okay. So as you can see, he actually did come in a breather bag. You're not supposed to be able to float these in your tank to acclimate the temperature because the bag won't even flow and it'll just end up suffocating your fish because there's a lack of oxygen. So I used the hole in the lid of the beta tank to be able to hold up the bag in the water and not actually let it sink down to the bottom. And after about 30 minutes of acclimating his temperature, I poured him carefully into a net over a bucket and put him directly into my tank. Because the main goal here is to just get them out of their dirty water as quickly as possible. So as you can see, he is a koi betta, meaning he has those koi kind of patterns on him. I'm so in love with his colors. I really love the purple, the kind of pastel purple with the blues and the magenta kind of reddish colors. I just think he's really beautiful and I could not have found a better koi betta. And within just 24 hours, I can tell that he was already getting really comfortable. He was swimming really fast around the tank. He was eating really well. I started off with pellets and then I would move on to flakes and blood worms like throughout the week. But yeah, he was just really comfortable and he seems really happy with his new home. He really enjoys hiding in the logs in the java fern. And I forgot to mention, but I also added some crypts to the bottom of the tank just to add more plants into the gravel. In case you're wondering, the shrimps are actually still alive. He likes to play around with them a lot sometimes, but then he just comes away and just minds his own business. So all four of them are still alive and they're doing really well. Now you may be wondering, when did I name him? So it took me a really long time. Actually, it took me like maybe two weeks to figure this out. But after just watching him explore his tank and just swim really, really fast around and just be really excitable and comfortable, I've decided to name him Turbo. So this is little Turbo. I'm so, so happy that he's happy in his new home. Uh, it just gives me so much joy just watching him swim around every single day and just be really comfortable. So yeah, this is my whole process of getting my new betta fish. I'd be really happy to do like maybe a month update on him if you guys really want to see that, so let me know. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and enjoyed learning a bit about betta care. I'm really glad that I was able to you guys on this journey with me. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! 死んだよ。